Hello world, Shelly here, and today I'm going to do a little get ready with me and I look including the Natasha Denona Alloy Palette, which is an exclusive from Ipsy. So this is also my April Ipsy. If you have not heard, Ipsy and BoxyCharm have joined forces under the Ipsy brand. And this month is the first month of the combined service. So what has changed is the Glam Bag Plus and the higher end. Now, the Glam Bag, that's the boring side. It's, it says look good, do good. I like that. Uh, on the <laughs> decorative side, the Glam Bags are still the same. So your Glam Bag gives you uh, five travel and sample sized products and it's $13 a month, you get to pick one of those products. Now, the Glam Bag Plus has gone away and it is being replaced with what's being called BoxyCharm. It is very similar to the Glam Bag Plus in the sense that you will get a box that has five full-size products of which you get to pick three of them. Uh, did I say the Glam Bag is $13 a month? The BoxyCharm is $28 a month, and then you will still have the option to be in their quarterly upgrade, which it's called the Icon Box. It's $58 a quarter. It replaces your membership, whether you are Glam Bag or BoxyCharm. That quarterly box will replace your subscription, and you will get up to eight full-size products, of which you can also choose three. So it's very similar in the way it's set up. There is no more Glam Bag Plus. There will only be the Glam Bags, like I'm talking the physical bag that we used to get in the Glam Bag Plus. So the BoxyCharm won't have a bag like these. They used to have the drawstring bags for the Glam Bag Plus. So that is the new and improved or combined Ipsy and BoxyCharm. So I have been accepted as a creator to continue as I was receiving selections from the Ipsy and the BoxyCharm every month. And I receive them in PR. I don't have, I'm not sponsored. I don't get paid for this. I don't have to make this video. I just like to try new stuff, as you know. And uh, this cat is so hot. You are making me hot. You have to go. <laughs> she's like leaning against my back and she's very warm. Cats are like furnaces. So let me tell you a little bit about what's in this month's Ipsy slash boxy charm, the glam bag and the boxy charm. So in my glam bag, I had the uh, pore Fessional Good Cleanup. This is from Benefit. This is a pore cleanser. And I had a Barrier Culture Moisturizer from The New Co. Why I like Ipsy, and I was a paid subscriber for years before they ever knew who I was. Uh, I get to try brands that I might not have discovered any other way. And you know I like trying, finding, and loving new makeup and skincare. I discovered Lawless through Ipsy. The very first Lawless thing I ever had was through an Ipsy. It was one of their eyeshadow palettes, if I remember correctly. Anyway, I love them. So those were in my glam bag, as were two things I'm gonna use today. I have the gel eyeliner from Shades by Shan. This is a matcha green liner. I have from Real Her the I E Y E and Beautiful Mascara. I'm gonna use that as well. Then in my the I'm gonna have to learn these new names in the Boxy Charm in the full size version. I've got an Origins Ginseng Into the Glow Brightening Serum. I have had good luck with Origins products in the past. I've got a Tovegan, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, Red Remedy Toner. And this is a hydrating toner that I am going to try out with the Seven Skins method because from its description, it's a vegan moisturizing toner with hibiscus extract as the main ingredient to deliver deep hydration into the skin and balance the oil moisture levels of the skin after cleansing. So this sounds to me like something that will be very nice for seven skins. So I will keep you posted on that. And, oh, this was also in the, the glam bag. This is 
the mini sponge set from Farah. We get a lot of Farah brushes through Ipsy, and I'm glad to see that we are getting some sponges too. All right, let's do something to this face. So one of the things in the BoxyCharm is the LYS, this is their, what is it called? The No Limits Cream Bronzer Stick. And so to celebrate the LYS product in here, I dug out my LYS foundation and that is what is already on my face. This is a beautiful foundation. I had very good luck with it reviewing it. It lives out on my little spinny thing over here so it is within reach and I do wear it. It is a good one. I also got in this boxy charm the Fenty Heat Lip Gloss. This is the shade, I think it was called Lemon, Lemon Lava. And of course, the star of the show, the Natasha Denona Alloy Palette. Now this palette is exclusive to Ipsy, but it's all shades that have come out before. So it's a curated collection for Ipsy that you can't buy in the stores. But most of these shades came from either the Natasha Denona Star Palette or the Bronze Palette, which is good because I'm not sure if I have the Star Palette, but I definitely don't have the Bronze Palette because I don't usually buy warm tones. So uh, we're gonna play with some warm tones today. So let's get some bronzer going. Did I just, of course I did. I just ruined the little top by, clumsy. I'm clumsy. It just is what it is. I've never used a triangular cream bronzer before. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna bronze tour. So I'm gonna do my contour with my bronzer and then blend it. And I've never used this one before so I don't know if I'm gonna be going in too hot and heavy with my product or not. I'm actually going to use a denser brush. This is the flat angle brush LR. I forget. Is it LaRousse? I don't remember. I don't remember where I got this brush, but we are going to blend up. Up, up, and away we go. Might as well just go counterclockwise around my face. I don't know what made me decide to do it this way. But uh, here we are. I just want to get a little bit spread out. Then I will go back and do the blend blend. Because as I'm sitting here thinking, I really don't want this product to dry down in its current place on my face. So let's make sure... We got some motion in the ocean here. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. All right. All right, now I'm gonna blend. Since everything is kinda doing its thing. This brush is not the best for blending. It's good for placement. I feel like I'm a little too far low. I need a sponge. Let's get a sponge. I'm a little too far low because of my choice of brush. So I'm gonna, I just got a little bit of foundation on here. And we're just gonna clean up a little bit on the underside here. Oh, now I'm too high. Well, you know. This is just life, y'all. Don't worry, it's all gonna end up fine in the end. You know how makeup is. It can be terrifying while you're in progress, but you will get there. You will get there. I'm actually gonna take my foundation brush and do the blending. Ah, much better, much better, much better. A little bit on my nose. Actually, I'm going to take this, what's left on here, and just get my nose a little bit. I find that now that I started putting color on my nose, because, you know, sun would naturally hit my nose, that now I feel like I look weird without it. So, yes. All right, should we do... What blush do I want? Oh, decisions, decisions. I did not decide this ahead of time. Ziva is knocking things 
all over my vanity. Let's do, well, let's just do some Natasha Denona since we're doing some Natasha Denona anyway. This is the My Dream Cheek Trio. All right, let's get some of her blush. And the blush is kind of where I blend into my bronzer, my bronze tour situation. And that's how I kind of even it all out. Kind of fix it with the blush. And you know, you're filling in the rest of the top of your cheek area. I do tend to take it all the way back toward my temples. And that is really just a gravity situation. I am uh, looking for lift <laughs> so that I don't have a lot of downward motion, which is why I don't want to get too far down with the bronzer because gravity is doing enough pulling it downward for me, right? Right, yes. I think I missed a spot. I just want a little bit coming down on the forehead. There we go. All right. Next up, well, I'll use the highlight in here too. So there's a little highlighter base that I like to keep upward on the higher point of my cheek. And it's a cream base. I think of it as like highlight primer because it looks a little odd if you just wear it on its own. It's, you know, I thought maybe it was like a cream highlight. It's not exactly but it does help smooth everything out where you're going to apply the highlight to. And then let's get the highlight. And somehow the two just look better together. Which, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. Of course it was formulated this way. But now I take my highlight onto the apples of my cheeks. I know a lot of people don't do that, but I like to glow to the gods. And I don't care if that's trendy anymore or not. I like it. And I do what I like. So I have already primed my eyes with the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly. So that has already happened. Let's dig in to this eyeshadow. I kind of want to do like a smoky eye situation. Here is the color scheme that we got going on. Not super, super smoky because obviously we have a variety of shades happening here, but you know, a little bit smoky. So let's find, I want my Wayne Goss number three, please. There we go. I'm gonna start with the lightest shade in the center and use this as sort of crease transition. I am going to go in darker on the crease, but I like to lay down a transition because it, number one, kind of sets the primer so that if I go in with a darker shade in the crease, the primer is already no longer tacky. It's been set with something. And number two, I forget what number two was. <laughs> I've completely lost my train of thought. So there's that. Because I started thinking that maybe I should zoom you guys in. So you can see my eyes a little better. Should I zoom you guys in? Yeah, I will zoom you guys in after I blend this a little bit more. I'm taking it a little higher than I normally would. Because... I'm gonna go in with some pretty smokiness, some pretty much smoky words, you guys. So actually I'm filming this at like 9.30 at night uh, because I got my box opened and I was excited. So I washed my face and I'm doing my makeup all over again. 
but it's the end of the day and it was a very stressful day at work and uh, my brain is no longer functioning so you're just gonna have to live with it all right let's zoom in let's zoom in just a smidge and then you can see my eyeballs that highlight is banging like whoo we are popping we are popping this this bronzer is a warmer tone than I normally wear. Does it have its shade on here? I am not gonna guess. Sherlock needs to help me. No limits. Harmony is the shade. Um, so it is warmer tone than normal that I would wear, but uh, this is very warm-ish eyeshadow palette as well, so I figure it works. Hold on, let me check the lighting real quick. All right, we're fine, we're fine. All right, so what do I want to do now? I'm going to take my Sigma E25 and go into that reddish brown. And we are going to take this into the crease to start with. And I'm kind of keeping it on the higher crease and pulling it upward into that previous shade so it's almost a transition itself with the depth of the color in the deepest part of the crease and then blending outward because I'm actually going to go in with that even darker shade in the future <laughs> and that's kind of how you get you know, a smoky eye is really just layers of color with a whole lot of blending. Now, I'm kind of doing a gradient going from lighter to darker, but you can just do, you know, a smoky eye with layers of the same color, often like a dark shadow, like black. We don't have a true black here, but we have a nice dark brown. And I think it's gonna work well. I'm just guessing based on my experience with other Natasha Denona eyeshadows, but her formula is lovely. So I put the, the heaviest part of the color in the deepest part of the crease, and then I'm just taking it slightly higher to blend it with that lighter shade. Now, at the end of this, we are going to go in with a smaller brush and do some fine tuning of the blending. We're just really kind of laying down color now. Laying down color, but also, you know, trying not to lay it down in a way that makes it challenging in the future. We want it to be blended enough, but we don't have to be perfect at this point. I think next... Normally I would save the darkest shade for after I put the shimmers down, but because I want a whole lot of smoky, I'm gonna get my Wayne Goss 20, and I'm gonna go in with the darker brown matte and lay down some of the darkness, then I will do the shimmer, and then we will touch up the darkness. So that is kind of my plan. I'm gonna start in my outer corner, lay down some color, and then take that into the crease. Now because this brush doesn't splay out as much as the E25 or the number three, see how it's keeping it concentrated in the crease? I don't wanna blend this one up as high as the other two. I want this to be just a long Sort of if I'm looking straight ahead without much lift of my eyebrows. If I'm looking straight ahead, I just barely want to see this brown poking out. Which for me means I have to take it a little bit higher because when my eyes are resting, all of that gets tucked into the crease and hides. But looking in my mirror, if I keep my eyes rested, you can see right as high as you need to bring it to make it visible. So go in, if you've got something similar happening, don't raise your eyebrows. Keep your eyebrows soft. Go in, 
put down, lay down some color so you can see, you're almost like tracing out where the top has to be. And then, then it's there, then you can see it and you can stop at that point and use that as your, sort of your traced guideline. Now I am going to take this farther into the inner corner than I normally would because we're going to make this pretty smoky. We're going to put a good amount of depth in here. I'm going to touch up the outer corner just a smidge to get it to match the depth that I've got going on in my crease right now. Think of your outer seven. Thank you, Nisha from Sugar Puff and Fluff. See how I've got a seven? Boop, boop. That's my seven. It's a reverse seven on the other side. That is in place of what we would normally hear people talk about, the outer V. The outer seven, if you have droopy outer corners or hooded lids, the outer seven, that mental image can help you to not drag your point of your eye down because when you're doing your makeup your eyebrows are often lifted and then when you relax it goes Whoa. and so we don't want that droop we want no droop so I'm gonna keep my eyes rested draw my little traceable area so I can see where that color needs to come up to this is also my less cooperative eyeball it has a little spot right there that hates to hold color it's holding this shade pretty well, relative to normal. Get my outer seven going, and then fill in where I traced that bit of color. You're gonna look like a raccoon for a minute. It's okay, it's okay. A little speck in the corner here that doesn't wanna hold on. All right. Now I'm going to get my Smith 253 flat brush and I think I'm going to use, do I want the gold or do I want the more neutral? I think I'm going to go with the more neutral one and I'm going to put this on the lid. Oh, it's got a little bit of gold to it. So I'm going to fill in the center, kind of fake a cut crease with that shimmer since it's a, a good contrast in lightness to darkness. So you're just almost faking a, like a third cut crease. All right, get that shimmer in place. Don't worry, don't worry right now. We're still going to go back in and blend. There's always more blending to be done. I almost feel like since it's only a five pan palette, I'm going to need to force myself to use that other shade somehow. <laughs> Does anyone else have that? Like it feels incomplete otherwise. All right. So we laid that down. All right. I'm going to take my fingertip into that la that gold shade on the end. I'm just gonna pop some right in the middle. Just for a little color dimension. Yeah, so that shade's a little more orangey gold, whereas the first one that I laid down is, uh, hmm, it's still got some gold to it, but it's less yellow. All right, back to my Wayne Goss number 20. We're gonna go back into the reddish shade Take a little bit of that above the dark shade of the crease. You know, this was one of the first ones that we put down on the crease. We don't want to lose the redness. We still want to keep it. I'm barely touching. Now I'm going to take it over to the edge, but just the smallest bit. I don't want a ton of color over here. I just want to blend the edge. So there's kind of just like a halo of color coming out of there. I gotta start over. I dipped in too heavily and I knew if I put that on my face it was gonna be too much. So I'm gonna just dip lightly. Just a little blendy blendy on the outer corner. We don't want to move a ton of color over here. We just want 
We just want a soft fade, you know? Look in the mirror, make sure you're even. All right, I'm wiping my brush off and I'm gonna go back into that darker shade and just touch up the outer corner to make sure that the seam between the shimmer and the dark shade is not a harsh line. Connect it into the crease. Ooh, that is nice and smoky. You know, it's not a whole smoky eye. I didn't do the whole lid smoky, but it's a good third of it, and I'm pretty heavy on the smoky in the crease, right? I'm gonna wipe off the brush again and I'm gonna go into the very lightest shade, same brush, and we're just gonna make sure that the very top has that soft blend. A look like this is using more of the eye space than I normally do, but it's meant to look dramatic. That was the plan. I wanted some drama. Drama at work, drama on my face. You know. All right, so then we're looking in the mirror and we're looking to make sure that the darkness comes equally on either side, that the outer corners are about even on either side. I'm brushing off my brush, so even though my brush is dirty, shouldn't have live pigment on it. And now I'm just blending. I just want to make sure all the colors have no harsh lines between their transitions. And they don't, but I'm just checking. You know. There's like almost no fallout. <sighs> Natasha Denona is one of my favorites. I love her. She is lovely. Now, a look that is so bold on the upper lash line on me usually requires that I go to the lower lash line and add a little bit of color down there. So I'm gonna take my Wayne Goss number five I'm going to use the darkest shade to start with and I'm just going to run a little bit on the lower outer half. Oh, let's just take it all the way. It's not to say you have to do lower lash line, but I usually feel on my eyes a look that's dramatic like this looks a little unfinished if I don't take it onto my lower lash line. My right side always turns out better than my left side does. I don't know why. It's just a better angle, I guess. It is what it is. Right, Ziva? All right. Now, this shade doesn't have, or this palette doesn't have a shade that I would use for an inner corner highlight. It's not light enough for my preference. So I'm gonna go back into my Natasha Denona highlight palette and get a dab of the highlight out of here and use that in my inner corner. I will also use this as my brow bone highlight. Not everyone does this either. It's another one of those things that's trendy or not. Uh, I don't care because I've actually just gotten into doing it again. Ziva, you have to go. You cannot be in front of the camera. You gotta go. And I'm just enjoying it again. So it's something I'm doing. Don't hit the camera, Ziva. They do not want to bounce around. You don't want to make people sick. Right. All right. What little speck did I just put on my face? 
All right. All right, I have the matcha pencil, this green liner, and I'm going to take this into my lower waterline. I don't often do lower waterline liner because I have allergies that are so hardcore this time of year that my eyes just water like crazy. But something made me want to do this. I could do it on the upper waterline, but generally colors get lost up there. Like black works so much better for me in the upper waterline. I don't tend to be able to see color if I put an actual color. So I'm gonna use my Flower Beauty for my tight line, my upper waterline. Do you need lower waterline for a look this dramatic? No, you could skip it because it's dramatic, but also it makes it even more dramatic. So if you're going all out, then go for it. I'm the kind of person that upper waterline is 100% mandatory. I can't not do my tight line. I think I look weird if I don't. But the lower, that's gonna be personal preference. You could also do under the lash line and not in the waterline, but I don't usually do liner there. That's just my, my habit for wearing makeup. Curl the lashes. All right. I am gonna grab my, let's do Lawless since I mentioned them already. This is their one and done mascara. And it really is one and done. It is super nicely bold and you can get away with just doing one coat of this stuff. Like one dip, I will say, cause obviously I brush it through my lashes multiple times, but one dip per eye. Look at how nice this stuff is. It's just fast and bold. And I love fast and bold. I rarely go for a natural lash look. I'm usually going gung-ho, you know. I'm usually, I usually want, here's what I want. I want thickness, like where it looks like there's a lot of depth at the root of the lash, like at the base of my lashes. And then I want it to look like I have a million eyelashes. I want many, 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 many lashes. I want thickness and volume. I also want a little bit of length, but if I have to sacrifice something, I want volume more than length. But this one gives a little bit of both. Because I will just say, this morning I tried a new mascara from Physicians Formula. Maybe it's not new, maybe it's just new to me. The Rosé All Day Mascara, and I was not impressed because it did not give me volume or length. It just put black on my lashes. So uh, that was not my favorite. Now this is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Zero Smudge. It is my lower lash mascara of life because it does not smudge. And my lower lashes are so long that they touch my face when I look down. And because of that, I almost always, with any other mascara, end up with mascara dots on my face, like transferred. This one does not. The Merit Mascara also does not. The MAC Giga Black also does not. Those are the three so far that I've found that do not transfer on me. This one's my favorite. I've heard that the Calare does not. What is this one called? Come hell or high water. Remember that, was it Poison? Poison song? Where's my metalheads? Where's my 80s hairband, people? Come hell, hell of high water. I can't remember the rest. Oh, I had a mascara I was supposed to wear. I forgot. Oh well. That is, that is life. Alright. Now we have the Fenty. 
This one should be a good choice for this eye look because it's going to be more minimal. Now it's yellow lava. What was it called? Lemon lava? Oh, it's pretty. This one I think would also be really nice on top of some lip liner. You can feel the glitter just a little bit. It is a plumping gloss and here comes the heat. It's coming. Mm. Oh lord, is she coming? I'm get off the excess. I do. When you press your lips together, you can feel the glitter just a little bit. The glitter in this gloss. But I don't mind. It's small, I can tell. Ooh. Ooh, she hot. There's some heat. All right, should I pull the hair down and see where we're at? See what's going? All right, let me zoom you guys back out. My hair does not really work for a warm toned look, but let's let's like slick it back, shall we? Should we do like a slicked back kind of a thing? Because I feel like with a look like this, if you can actually, the more of my natural color you can see, ignore this sideburn. It has been misbehaving all day. There you have it. Here's the finished look. There's the eyes. I mean, I'm not surprised that I enjoy a Natasha Denona palette. Of course I do. She's lovely. Oh, my lips are on fire. <laughs> They're burning me. They're burning me. It's hot. It's hot. This one's... So, I have a couple of these. And... The Fenty Heat glosses, it's not the same as like, most of the lip plumping glosses feel like, almost like you have peppermint on your lips. And so it's like a tingling. This feels more like tingling from heat rather than tingling from mint. Like I get why they call it heat. Like I feel like literally my mouth is warm. Like my lips are warm and <laughs> Not, it's not bad, it's just noticeable. <laughs> so, all right. Got my necklace from Galway. There's the finished look. What do you think? What do you think? Ah, ha, ha. I'm digging this highlight. Mm, look at the highlight, look at the highlight. There you have it. Taking a little walk through my Ipsy Boxy Charm combo. Good, good stuff this month. Good stuff this month. Thank you, Ipsy, for sending me this in PR. I appreciate it. I love it. I love it. And oh, goodness gracious. If you could send me more Natasha Denona every month, I would love you forever. Now, don't forget, you do get to pick your products. One product in your glam bag and, excuse me, three products in your BoxyCharm or your, oh, excuse me, Icon Box. So that is awesome. They've also got a bunch of other things. They gave me a little cheat sheet card here. Uh, you get power picks. Every month members will now get superstar products from Beauty's Most Wanted brands, at least one with the glam bag and at least two with the BoxyCharm called Power Picks. They're beauty favorites that make the entire monthly subscription worth every penny. Trust. By removing the drawstring glam bag, these BoxyCharm boxes will have a total value of up to $200. And remember, that's 28 bucks. So that's awesome. They will also have a mega drop shop. Member exclusive deals are about to get even better. The quarterly sales where subscribers can snag up to 80% off hundreds of top brands. They have a beauty boost. If you add it to your membership, you will get... First dibs on premium bonus full-size products and a guaranteed savings of up to 60%. So yeah, they've got a lot of options and gorgeous together. Ipsy and Boxy Charm. There you have it. Are you an Ipsy member? Did you get the Natasha Denona palette? That would be in the Boxy Charm level of the subscription. Let me know in the comments down below. What's your favorite thing? What are you trying out? What new brands have you been exposed to? My lips are still on fire. 
literal fire. It's not literal fire. That's like so not the meaning of literal, but they literally feel like they are on fire. I'm a wimp. Eh, what can I say? Let me know in the comments. What'd you get? What do you like? What do I got to check out? Let me know down below. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.